We're continuing the discussion between Dante and the Roman poet Statius in, um, on the high terrace of Purgatory, one of the most fascinating uh, episodes in the entire Commedia. And Dante uh, raises a question that should have occurred to you and all of us by now, which is, what is a pagan poet? Someone who, as far as we know, was not a Christian. What is he doing in purgatory on his way to heaven? And moreover, if, if Statius was a disciple or a student of Virgil, how is it that Virgil belongs in limbo, in the outer portals of hell. Uh, Virgil cannot, and as we'll see in the poem, Virgil can't go much further, even in purgatory. Even as a temporary guide, Virgil's going to have to quit. He's going to have to go back. Uh, and how is this guy Statius moving on, moving on in ascension to the ultimate bliss of, of heaven? So Dante asks um, Statius directly, from what you wrote in Clio's company, it does not seem that you were faithful then to that faith without which virtue is in vain. If this be so, says Dante, tell me what heavenly sun or earthly beam lit up your course so that you could sail behind the fishermen. I mean, what a beautiful way to put it. Dante is like, well, how is it that you are being counted among the followers of Christ? Weren't you a pagan? And this is Statius, now talking to Virgil and saying something downright shocking. He says, it was you, it was you directed me to drink Parnassus waters. So, so far, no problem. It was you, Virgil, who taught me the art of poetry. It was you whose radiance revealed the way to God. What? Virgil, the pagan, leads Statius, another pagan, to Christianity. But how is this even possible? How can someone who doesn't know the light of Christ lead another person to Christ? What's going on here? And here's Statius with one of the most memorable analogies now in the, again, in the entire Purgatorio. Um, this is Statius talking. You were the lonely traveler in the dark who holds his lamp behind him, shedding light not for himself, but to make others wise. So here's Stacia saying that you, Virgil, are sort of like a guide, but instead of holding your lamp in front where you yourself can see the light, you're sort of holding it behind you. You can't see. But what you're doing is you're clearing the way for others behind you to be able to see further and go further than you ever could. Now, how did Virgil do this? What was Virgil's lamp? Turns out, Virgil's lamp was a poem that Virgil himself wrote. Now, not the Aeneid, but rather a poem called the Fourth Eclogue, in which Virgil wrote this. These are the lines that Dante quotes. For you once wrote, this is Statius speaking, he's now quoting Virgil, The world is born again, justice returns, and the first age of man and a new progeny descends from heaven. Now, this is, in fact, in Virgil's poem, The Fourth Eclogue, written before the time of Christ. And most po uh, poetic um, literary scholars and historians will tell you that what Virgil was writing about in this poem was uh, a presumed heir to the Emperor Augustus. So Virgil, the great celebrator of Rome, was in effect saying a new child will be born, born to Augustus, uh, will now rule, this child will now become an emperor just as Augustus was, and a kind of golden age will come down upon the world, and in a sense history will be transformed by the birth of this single solitary uh, child. But, says Statius, I didn't read the poem that way. I read it completely differently. Let's remember Statius is born after the time of Christ. And even though from history's point of view, Statius, as far as we know, never became a Christian. But here's Dante doing something very daring, something that he did with Ulysses in the Inferno. He's doing it with Statius here. He's kind of adding to what we know about Statius. And he's doing it inventively, but to make a really profound point. And what, what Dante is really having Statius say, in effect, is, listen, although you, Virgil, might have written the poem intending one meaning, I, Statius, took that birth of a child to refer to the birth of a redeemer, 
Just as in the Old Testament, we have in Isaiah and others prophecies of a child to be born that Christians later took to be, look right there, uh, what Isaiah is talking about is, is the birth of Christ. Similarly here, uh, Stacia says, I read your poem, Virgil, differently than you did. Uh, I took it to mean uh, that Christ was now born into the world uh, and uh, the transformer and redeemer of the world, and that set me on the path uh, to become a Christian. Now, there is uh, all kinds of things to be said about this remarkable uh, episode, but the one thing I'll say now, and I'll pick it up next time, uh, next time is not going to be, by the way, tomorrow or the next day, I'm doing a special episode Wednesday. Uh, but Thursday, I'll, I'll pick up this, um, this track. What I want to say is that what Statius represents uh, uh, for Dante and Virgil is the place at which the intellect um, finds its outer point. In other words, Virgil represents reason. And what Dante is really saying is that reason by itself uh, can only take you so far. At a certain point, faith has to be your ultimate guide. Faith has, is what's going to get you to the top of the purgatorial mountain. And so here's Dante treading very lightly upon a great theme, the theme being the limits of reason itself.